Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing more practice with the cross product and to be specific we're going to be applying the cross product to a real life problem like an applied problem if you want to call it that. So this is problem two from section 1.3 in your free online discrete math textbook and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. All right, so for part A, I'm gonna solve this problem in two different ways. The first way is the fast way. The size of the cross product, according to the textbook, is the size of A times the size of B. And the size of A, in this case, is two. There's only heads and tails. Those are the only two objects. And the size of B is six. So two times six is 12. And so that's the number of elements in A cross B. That's the first way of solving it. The second way is the longer way, and that is you have to just create the set A cross B by hand and then count the number of elements. That's another way of counting these elements. And this is probably the way that the textbook wanted you to do this. So the cross product by definition is the set of all ordered pairs where the first element is from the first set and the second element is from the second set. And so in this case, we have a bunch of ordered pairs where the first element is an element of A. And so I'm gonna pick heads. And then we go through every single possibility here where the second element comes from the set B here. And so we can pick like one, for example. So this is in the cross product and we need all of them. Again, sets don't have repeating elements. That's called a multi-set and that's different from a set. And so just make sure that you cover all of the elements and don't repeat any. So next up we could do heads in two. We could do heads in three. We could do heads in four and all the way up to six and then that's every combination that we can get where the first element is heads and the second element is from B. So now let's go on to the next element in A, which is tails. And we'll go through every possible combination with elements in B. So tail one, and I should put tails one. All right, and then we get all the way up to tails and six, and that is all of the elements in this set. So this is what A cross B looks like. And now we can count the number of elements in the set to get the cardinality, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So those are your 12 elements specifically. Now let's do part B. Part B says, how can you interpret the set A cross B? Well, we have A cross B in front of us right here. And so let's try to interpret what this could possibly mean. Well, if I were to flip a coin and then roll a die, then the outcome of that scenario is going to be one of these elements in this set. So for example, this element here, heads in a six, is a possible outcome that I can get if I flip a coin and then roll a die. And so this set is just the collection of all possible events that could happen if you flip a coin and then roll a die. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.